My name is Elisa New. I'm sitting here in my office in the Barker Center uh, at Harvard University, uh, and I'm so happy to welcome you to the first module uh, of the course Poetry in America, this module called The Poetry of Early New England. We may think of poems as, um, as things one reads in volumes of poetry, um, things one purchases, at a bookshop, and, and poems as part of, we think of poems as part of one's discretionary time. Uh, they, they may be, they may help us with, say, our spiritual or psychological development. They may give us access to, um, uh, to beauty. They may soothe us in ways we may find hard to describe. Uh, and yet poetry in our culture has become part of our, our discretionary uh, time. Poetry pervades Puritan culture. Poetry, uh, one encounters poetry in every institution of Puritan culture. As I've already said, um, in reading the scripture, one encounters language uh, that in many of the books of the Bible uh, is, uh, is patterned, is formed. Um, biblical parallelism um, will become uh, uh, important for the Puritan poet. Um, the Psalms, uh, which, inspire, um, uh, which inspire the Puritan hymn, um, will uh, be important to the Puritan poet, but even the smallest Puritan toddler um, will learn uh, of his own, will learn about the human condition through poetry. I'm holding here the New England Primer, the ABC book used by um, Puritan parents and Puritan educators to teach children to read. Every single part of the New England Primer, uh, as, and this is certainly the case with children's books to this day, every single part of this book is written in, uh, in verse. The little lamb doth skip and play, always merry, always gay. Uh, the whale's the monarch of the main, as is the lion of the plain. Um, the Puritan child, of course, uh, in reading, uh, is reading poetry not only, uh, not only designed to stimulate his imagination and tickle his sense of playfulness, um, but poetry, uh, uh, poetry devised to help him understand what's really primary, that is to understand the ABCs of his spiritual condition. And so just after we finish with Z in the uh, New England Primer, we'll read, uh, the praises of my tongue I offer to the Lord that I was taught and learnt so young to read his holy word. Spiritual education, the spiritual curriculum and the curriculum in literacy um, are both achieved um, through poetry. Uh, reading any Puritan history, uh, any account of the early settlement um, of New England, we'll find poems. Um, many of these poems are uh, elegies for departed leaders dead leaders, the elegy, an enormously important Puritan form, uh, think about it, a, uh, a form of religion that prizes one's life in the world beyond more than one's life on this earth is going to make sure to produce a suitable poem for the dead, <laughs> right? Um, it, it is in a certain way uh, in uh, in dying that a human being realizes himself and the Puritan elegy will, um, uh, will, will let no occasion of an important death go 
go by. But if we think about, say, our own tradition of the obituary, it's rare uh, that uh, the obituary page of one of our papers includes a poem to the dead. No, uh, no account of the death of a leader, uh, whether in a history or in uh, a more contemporary form, would ever be without its poem in, uh, in, this, uh, in this culture. We're going, in other words, to be encountering poems written not for the idle hour, written not, poems not written simply to improve life, but we're going to be encountering the poems of a culture that thinks of poetry as uh, an essential tool in daily living. In this module, we'll be reading the poetry of early New England. This is a poetry um, rich with the geography and natural features of, uh, of North America. Uh, this is a poetry um, surprised by beauty and chastened by dangers. This is a poetry that dwells in the, in the seen world, in the literally encountered world, but also a poetry uh, that dwells in the unseen world. New England poets, and especially Puritan poets, um, are very, very attentive to the invisible as well as the visible world. And these are poets, as you'll see, who try to infer the visible world, those aspects of it they may be able, uh, from the visible world. That activity, makes even those who don't write poetry poets, since the ordinary lay person is always looking for hints, for images, for um, evidences in this world of the world beyond, of the world to come, which is to say that ordinary Puritans dwell in a world of similes and metaphors. Ordinary Puritans um, uh, make, are constantly making connections between what they see and what uh, they imagine heaven must be. These are immensely literate people. We'll be reading in this module people who live in the world of the Bible. Some of them imagine that they are as Israel, uh, Israel who fled Egypt uh, in order to enter a godly land God, uh, that had been reserved for them. Some of them imagine themselves in that precise relationship to scripture, um, entering it uh, uh, entering it as, um, as God's next instance of the, uh, uh, of, of the godly people um, of Israel. Living within scripture, uh, having been adjured by Martin Luther and, uh, and other reformers uh, to, uh, that, that by scripture alone, the Latin phrase is sola scriptura, by scripture alone uh, does the believer come to understand God's revelation. Uh, that confidence that reading will deliver uh, the sinner into a deeper understanding of his own spiritual, what he will call his own spiritual estate, will make these uh, these uh, Puritans, persons who listen attentively um, to, uh, to sermons by the hour, sometimes sitting for three or four or five hours uh, in church services. Um, these are people who, uh, in those moments, they can find for private time themselves, not only meditate on their own uh, on, on their own daily actions and on their own thoughts, but write out these 
meditations. Uh, these are persons looking for ways in writing to find their way uh, more, uh, um, more fully into understanding and uh, into, a, into a life uh, more fully consonant with the wisdom of the scripture.